What is violence? Violence is defined by Merriam-Webster as the use of physical force so as to injure, abuse, damage, or destroy, an instance of violent treatment or procedure, injury by or as if by distortion, infringement, or profanation, intense, turbulent, or furious and often destructive action or force, vehement feeling or expression, an instance of such action or feeling, a jarring or clashing quality, undue alteration as of wording or sense in editing a text. I think that this definition says something important about which we should be reminded because so many people are misusing this word. In fact, the usage is so bad that, well, let's just say that it's time for some roasted opinions, shall we? Are constructive actions violence? Now, these actions might not be what some people want for others to do, but in and of themselves, constructive actions are not violence. This might be the building of a great civic construction project in which some actions like clearing trees and excavation may fit the definition of violent actions. Such projects require sudden and deliberate changes to the environment which are destructive of the status quo at the first stage of construction. However, as a collective whole, working to improve living conditions is not violent. Quite the opposite, in fact, it's constructive. There are those who would disagree with that assessment. Speaking Tree has an article in which the author declares that every act is an act of violence, from washing clothes to chopping vegetables. The entire article is an example of the sort of sweeping, heavy-handed approach to categorizing violence which we see these days. Declaring every action to be violence fosters inertia in some and justifies actual violence in others, since people must decide for themselves what level of violence is acceptable to them. I link the article in the description so that you can read it for yourself. Are words violence? While hurtful, hateful words are unacceptable and may spur some to acts of violence, words themselves are not violent. They are words, whether spoken or printed. Making undue alterations to words is a form of violence according to the dictionary definition, but this is talking about alterations designed to suppress the message carried by the original words. It's a form of violence specific to editing, such as selectively editing an interview to change the character of said interview to match a narrative. One might also threaten to harm another. That is violent in its nature. In all other cases, including hate speech, words are not violence. They may be inflammatory, they may be provocative, but they are not violence. In fact, words might be used as an antidote to violence even when speaking upon divisive subjects. Discussion, especially rational and respectful discussion, is the best way to resolve contentious issues to end or even prevent violence. The Atlantic has an article about this subject. In it, the author discusses why it's inherently dangerous to teach students that words are violent in and of themselves. There must be a marketplace of ideas, where even bad ideas can be discussed in order to identify those bad ideas. Banning speech is how real violence is fostered, because if those who hold bad ideas cannot speak, then they are more likely to take violent action instead and less likely to be identified before they do so. I'll link the Atlantic article in the description for you as well. Is silence violence? Now, if words are not violence, then certainly silence cannot be violence. Like words, silence may provoke intense discussions and even condemnation, and justifiably so in some cases. But remaining silent is a good way to avoid provoking people with words, and thus must be considered anathematic to violence in most cases. Only when remaining silent provokes avoidable violence can silence be considered to have anything to do with violence. The Huffington Post is one of many outlets who have declared that failing to speak out is violence, though. This has become quite a movement on social media in which people who fail to voice a position are castigated for not doing so. There are entire organizations predicated on the belief that if one does not speak out in support of their cause, whether as noble as ending domestic violence or as ignoble as ending the non-existent wage gap, 
that one is therefore committing violence by not speaking. Let's be clear, remaining silence is a form of free speech, and as I stated before, speech isn't inherently violence. I will link the HuffPo article in the description for you, though, so that you can read it for yourself and decide. Are ideas violence? Now let's think about ideas as violence. We aren't talking about planning violence, which is the only time in which ideas might be violent. We're talking about concepts, principles, and beliefs in a general sense. In other words, we're talking about disagreeing with one another or thinking something new and different. Disagreeing is not violent unless it escalates into violence. Thinking new and different ideas is not violent until and unless someone attempts to physically force those ideas upon others against their will. The American Thinker has a good piece on this. I'll provide a link in the description below. Now that we've established what I think isn't violence, let's look at certain actions which are violent. Physically attacking someone with the intent to cause them harm is violence. That's the common understanding of violence against a person, physically attacking them using force. Throwing objects, even objects which are likely to cause embarrassment rather than harm, is violent. Milkshakes are unlikely to cause much hurt, but they are likely to force someone to abandon their platform to clean up and change clothes before resuming. They are far more likely to escalate the situation to further acts of violence in response as well. That's why even the childish act of throwing a milkshake at someone is a simple assault, and those who throw them must be punished in accordance with the law. Blocking or menacing someone to force them not to speak or not to enter a space is violent. Threatening harm to someone to force them to change is violent. Breaking objects is violent. Destroying or damaging buildings is violent. Setting fire to things against the will of the owner is violent. These instances are all examples of violence against property. They use force against that property in order to compel the owners of that property to make changes. Have you noticed the pattern yet? Violence requires action or the threat of action to force someone else to comply with one's position. One must force an involuntary change. Simply speaking one's mind without threatening harm is not violent. Crass, ignorant, and hateful at times, but not violent. Wrong ideas aren't violent until and unless they are forced upon someone else. Once forced, even right ideas are violent and cost one the moral high ground. Remaining silent isn't violent unless the silence is a part of attempting to force a harmful outcome. Even then, one must establish that the silence is deliberate and in full knowledge that someone else or their property will come to harm before it's violent. Perhaps we should consider why so many are insisting that words, thoughts, and even silence are violent. Are they trying to foster a better world or are they trying to force the world to conform to their wishes? Fostering change isn't violent at all, but forcing change is. Now, declaring that everyone is a fascist who has different ideas than you, says different things than you would say, or remains silent when you would speak out, is a convenient ethical trick for groups like Antifa. By labeling people fascists, Antifa justifies the use of violence against them. That's why I have a problem with Antifa and similarly motivated groups justification of violence against people who have done no harm to them or to anyone else. This is a concept known as othering, and it dehumanizes the object of the othering in order to justify otherwise socially unacceptable behavior. I wish that I could say that this is uncommon, but I would be lying. Othering has been the defining factor in the worst atrocities in history. Othering is at the heart of every violent act, because othering someone excludes and dehumanizes them in order to overcome the societal mores against violence. Now, am I advocating violence? Um, no. Just, no. I'm a retired soldier. I stood ready to do violence in order to protect the Constitution, the United States, and the citizens of the United States for over 20 years. I've seen real violence firsthand. Not this penny ante squalling that some are calling violence. I've also seen how othering works in real time. And I'm telling you that the othering which goes on in our society right now needs to stop. We need to talk to each other, not shout past each other. 
We need to discuss good ideas, and we need to discuss bad ideas, too, so that we can convince people to change their minds and abandon those bad ideas. It's the only real way to move forward as a society and to develop as individuals through discussion.